We made it so that you can attack in the last video. But in this video, the enemy is going to attack you. Today we're going to be working on an end turn system and an enemy attack AI. Without And without further ado, let's get started. So right here on the screen, you can see Unity is opened up. Nothing has changed in the scene. We still have the three players, three enemies, the camera, and the canvas. So to get started, we want to first change up the selection manager script. As in before, we had a button there. When we clicked the attack button, we were able to select which player we want to attack with and attack the enemy. What we want to do now is click on the enemy, the player first. It will show the attack button, and then when we click it, we're able to attack the selected enemy. So to start off, to start off, we want to create a new script that I'm going to be naming player, and I'm just going to wait for this to finish loading, and then just double click it. Once Visual Studio is open up with the player script on it, what you want to first do is create two boolean variables or just bools. One of them which will tell the game if you've attacked already and one to tell the game if you are able to attack. So first one created first one. So public bool able to able to attack is equal to false. And the second one, public bool attacked is equal to false as well. The next thing you want to do and go back to this go to selection manager. As you can see here, it's currently showing a raycast after you hit the left mouse button. And then it's going to check if you hit the player, the enemy, or nothing. If you did hit the player, if it's able to attack, then you can't attack your troop and all that. So what you want to do now, you want to create a public player variable. You don't, you can put this as private, but I only have to put it as public so that I can see in this inspector which, if it's selected or not, you can always change this. I'm going to put this as selected player. And then down here, instead of able to attack equals true, you want to change that to selected player dot attack equals true. Able to attack equals true. So now when you click the button, it's going to say that this is able to attack. And you're able, you're able to attack now. Next thing you want to do, you want to create a new game object. So public game object attack button. BTN is a shortened version of button. And also create a new namespace on top. So using system dot collections dot generic because we're going to be creating a list. So over here, I want to put in a public list of game objects call I'm not, that I'm going to be calling characters, and I'm going to return it to new list of game objects, just like that. And then now the next thing you want to do is tell the game that you want to attack instead of telling you that you can't attack your own troops. So here when you, where it says hit.collider.compare tag player, you want to remove this entire thing. And instead, you want to say var player script is equal to hit.collider.getComponent player. And this is now a variable now. I have a indentation problem here, so don't mind me. Yours should have no problem, I would expect. And next thing you want to do is tell the game. So next thing you want to do is you want to put select the player as equal to player script, because that's what we want. So selected player is equal to player script, and also like we just said in the beginning, I'm going to just do this. We're gonna have to show the attack button when you click the button. No, when you hit the player, you want to show the button. So you want to put in attack button dot set active equal true. So basically, what's doing here is gonna get the player script from the player, and then it's gonna show the attack button, and then it's gonna get it's gonna make this equal to this. Next thing you want to do, you want to change this as well. You don't want to delete everything because we're gonna have to keep it. So over here, you want to put in selected player dot able to attack. Normally, this will be okay, but remember we have another requirement: is that you have not attacked this turn, and you're able to attack. So what you want to do here, you want to type the and symbol twice, and put in selected player dot attacked is equal to false. And that should be everything you need. In the end, you want to put in selected player 
Got able to attack is equal to false. And then selected player dot attacked is equal to true. Just like that. And then over here in else, you can't just put an else anymore. You just want to be more specific. So if selected player dot able to attack and selected player dot attacked. So if you're able to attack, but you've already attacked, you can't attack. You have already attacked this turn with this character. And this should be everything you need. Everything should be working just like normal. So I'm going to be heading right back into the Unity project. And select all three of this and add in the player script. And go to the where, wherever you put your selection manager. I'm going to put in the... Don't put in anything in the selected player. Leave this blank for now. It won't cause any errors, don't worry. And then you want to hit this handy lock button. And then you want to just select all three and put it in the list. Next you want to do, you want to just show all this. Duplicate this button. I'm going to go closer to it. Drag this down a bit. And redo it. The, and then unclick the lock tool. And put in and turn. This is for later. Not yet. But I'm just going to set it up just for now. And there shouldn't be anything here. You can just move this for now. And I'm just going to hide this. And then go back to your selection manager and the inspector, and then just drag in the attack button. And now you can just click play, and it should start working. So now if you hit this, attack button will show up. You click attack. There is an error here, though. What it's saying is that I've checked this error already, because I write all my code beforehand before I show it to you guys. It's just saying that you haven't, you didn't hit the type player so it's just giving you an error telling you that you didn't hit it but it should work the same so if I hit this guy it says I missed and if I hit this guy same thing he's dead and all the same so I missed twice and hit once but now the main problem here is you're just gonna continue on but you can't continue attacking after all three of them that's finished attacking so what you want to do here you want to go back to your selection manager and then you want to create a new public void variable uh, function I mean, called n turn. In here, you want to create a for each function, which you can just do this simply by typing for each and then double tapping tab. And then in here, var character in characters, you want to get the character script which is equal to character dot get component player and then in here you want to just reset everything so another easier way to do this is actually creating a function here so private not private because you have to access this from another script public void reset everything here then put in able to attack is equal to false and attacked is equal to false and simply all you have to do here is character script dot reset everything and it should automatically reset and you should be able to re-attack and re-attack and re-attack so now let's just go ahead and check this by going to the button here adding the function out on click method Drag in your selection script's main parent object and click enter. And now, if you hit play, you can just do everything again. I hit him, missed him, and missed again. So now you see that if I try and. Oh, I just clicked enter. Never mind. Okay. But as you can see, that. Now I can attack again, but if I use the same guy and hit same guy, I'll say you can't attack. You have already attacked this turn with this character. So next you want to do, you want to let the enemies attack because you can't just have yourself attack the whole time. Well, it's kind of unfair and it's kind of not the whole point of the game. So what you want to do here, you want to also create another script that I'm going to be calling enemy. 
and now it automatically opened my Visual Studio. Just double click it, and you want to create one public game object variable that I'm going to be calling selection. Or no, you don't have to do this. So once the enemy script is loaded, you want to put in a function called public void attack enemy, which is in this case our players. You want to put in uh var random enemy is equal to before I put this in, you want to put in you want to reference the selection manager script. So I'm going to put in var selection manager is equal to find object of type selection manager and now you can see that it's referenced to selection manager so var random enemy equal to random dot range zero to selection manager dot characters dot count so after you finish this what you want to do is you can just print out a message saying hit enemy and then plus random enemy dot name nope we have not chosen which one so we want to put in var enemy name for now this is not this is just temporary until this video ends so var random enemy selection manager dot characters and then you want to put in the same thing as you do in arrays except inside you want to put in random enemies random enemy or you want to print hit enemy space plus enemy name dot name or you could have just done your dot name simply you can just move that just like that and what you can find out now is that this should be all working except nothing is calling it so that's exactly what we're about to do now we're going to create a new script called enemy manager and once it loads you want to go into visual studio and head right in so what you want to do is create a list so you want to put in using system dot collections dot generic in here you put in a public list of game objects called enemies or in this case let's just call it enemies for now and return it as new list of enemies now you can put in something like public void attack characters and in here you put in for each tab twice and enemy and enemies var enemy script equals enemies enemy dot get component enemy and now we have the enemy script from each enemy you going to put an enemy dot enemy script dot attack enemy just like that and now it should be working now we have to call this method in the selection manager how you want to do that is find object of type enemy manager and then just like the other ones just attack characters just like that now let's head back and you want to assign these scripts so over here enemy and over here assign the enemy manager and then I'm gonna click the handy lock tool again and then select everything in here put it right in and that should be all working one reason this won't work okay this will this code will currently cause an error because sometimes the enemy may have chosen the game object that's already been destroyed but then the list does not have that game object so what we do here is not now later on except the enemy maybe so in here we want to do something where if we do kill the enemy we want to remove him from the list so find object of type enemy manager dot enemies dot remove game object so when this enemy dies it'll be removed from the enemies list from the enemy manager and we can head back 
we will do this later next video on the player next episode on the player because then it'll just cause an error because it can't find the game object in the list so we want to just hit play and when we just do everything the same way hit miss and hit like that and I end turn you can see it hit enemy one and enemy I mean just player and player one so these two are hit in the next video or next episode we will add a health system to these players and then we're going to decrease health every time they get hit and just like that it should just be over let's just quickly add in a win and lose counter so in the selection manager you want to put in in the update method if find object of type enemy manager dot enemies dot count is equal to zero you can print out you win and then else print else if find object of type enemy manager dot enemies dot count is not equal to zero and characters dot count is equal to zero then print you lose over here let's just add the same thing so and characters dot count is not equal to zero then you win just like that so now let's quickly go back and I'll just test that out and I'll just show you guys that it works. And see, you can see that now it says you win. It will never display the you lose part because currently we have all three players and the, we aren't getting any damage from it. So now, as a little bonus, I'm going to be adding a small sprite on top that will show you which player you're clicking on, just for the sake of the video. And it will just be easier for me and you guys as well to see which if you're clicking the correct thing. So quickly, I'm going to create a 2D object sprite, and then create, give it a knob sprite to it, and then reset its position, put it to around something like 3, turn, make it something like green or something. And then I'm going to rename this to Player Show or something like that. And then I'm going to go to the Selection Manager script. And then I'm going to create a new public transform variable called Player Shower. And then that's all done. And over here, you open an if hit the collider. You want to change the position of this object to around, I would think, three or four on top of the player. So player shower dot position is equal to hit dot collider dot game object dot transform dot position or we could do new vector two because you have to redo the entire positioning dot x and since y is on in charge of the up and down I put hit dot collider dot game object dot transform dot position dot y plus something like three I can change that later or let's just create a variable so public in uh, margin I would count it as and then I'm gonna put plus margin so we can change this up also this can get a really long so I'm gonna create another variable in here called var player transform equals hit dot collider dot game object dot transform dot position so now you can just remove all that and put in player transform remove all this and put in player transform now let's whoa let's return and now Let's go to the selection manager parent object and put in the player shower. 
let's put the margin to 3. Let's see if that will just check that out. Let's see if that's okay. Depends on which object you're talking about. I think uh, 3. That is really high. Let's change it to something like 1. That seems like the correct answer. 1. That looks okay. Let's just change that. I'm going to move this over to the top of the first player first, and then change the margin to 1. Now let's click play. And now you can see it just moves around. Also another special bonus, you know, in, in so we're going to create a small, another sprite down here that will show us which enemies that are able to be attacked. This should be simple if I'm correct. So you can just duplicate this and then I'm going to put it to red. And instead of going up, I'm going to make it go down. Put it under this one. So, I'm going to call this the enemy shower. And then I'm going to make three of them. So, I'm just going to make them like this. This is the tricky part because we can't just have one because we may have more than one enemy in the scene. But we can have, we may be able to have three. But that means we have to also make the parent to the enemies. So what we want to do, we want to put in like this. This should be the simplest way. We might be changing this up later on. And then what we want to do, like for example, when we click and turn, we're going to make it show when we're getting attacked or when we haven't clicked the button yet, then we're not going to make it show. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new this time an array of game objects called enemy shower. When we click the attack button, we want to put in for each var shower and enemy shower shower dot set active equals true. And then we'll just copy this and paste it into this end part. And then instead of true, you want to put into false. So when you enter and you can't see that. Now let's go back. We want to select the parent object. Hold that in. And you want to put it inside the enemy shore. Now, we will be destroying the enemy, but then at the same time, we have to also remove the shore object from the selection manager array. So, what we want to do here is put in a public game object personal shower, this is his own shower, and over here you want to put in find object of type player, no not player, selection manager dot enemy shower dot remove, no, now let's go back to selection manager, I just realized we have to remove the object from the list as well, so we're going to just copy this, instead of a list, we're going to put in an array. So here, there we go. And instead of characters, we're gonna put an enemy shower. Don't know if that spelled it correctly. Here's one trick. You want to double click control, just hold down control and double click R while holding it. And then you want to put in something like enemy shower. And this does not work because we had a character here, so we can we can only do this manually. There we go. And over here, dot remove and then personal show up. There we go. So now let's return. And then let's hit play. Let's quickly. Oops, I forgot to do that. This is my bad. So I'm going to unclick the lock, put in the enemy. And it should have this game object slot. Just put that in really quickly. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to copy this component. And then just hide this. Just so that you know it works. I'm going to select this player. Click attack. 
and it's not showing. I wonder why. Okay, so what happened here is I forgot to put in the enemy show, which is my bad. Okay, so all you have to do is just put this inside the enemy show and it works. So now I can just hit him, and you can see that it has missed once again. I'm going to just select him, and then attack him. He's dead. But there's no error showing that, oh, you cannot see it or anything. Use him, attack him. Seems that I've missed. I'm going to hit end turn, and you can see this all disappears. Another time you want to disappear is after you attack. So I'm just going to copy this and put it in here, right at the end. There we go. And that should be it. I'm not going to be testing this part because I know it's going to work for sure. I know it should work for you as well. If it does not, say that in the comments below and I'll help you resolve it as, much as, as fast as possible. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, be sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video. And hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next episode if you're interested. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks to this. Yeah. Thank you to the Patreon supporter. Will. Will Goad. For supporting me on Patreon. Because I also want to be on this list. Or this one name list for now. Just be sure to go to patreon.com. Slash Andy underscore Eclipse. To support me. Any amount is alright. It just supports me a lot, helps me a lot, and yeah.